what did I pack and how social conscious is it? Well, let's start with the clothes. Hi everyone and welcome back to the latest episode of Becoming Woke with Kate Starr. Today's episode is being filmed from lovely Colorado where I am escaping the crowds of California but definitely not being the heat. It is over 100 degrees right now. For today's episode, I want to talk about something new. Namely, I'm going to audit what I packed to bring here to Colorado. Um, a lot of what I've been doing is camping, staying in hotels, um, staying with friends and family. So, you know, I haven't gone through and audited my clothes yet because I know it's not going to be awesome. Current outfit. <laughs> Okay. Hi! Okay, I'm back at home in LA and I'm not wearing anything I packed with me. Um, so Buddha and I are going to go through everything I packed except for the bras and undies and spend everything by where, where I purchased it. Almost universally, unless there was some business meeting involved. Um, but also, I really have a knack for like really wanting to be comfortable. And right now, I'm in something cute that I don't think is as comfortable as it could be. It's getting to be evening, and I'm about to go to the beach with my pup. Um, I actually changed into these linen pants, and they are just so comfy. <laughs> the socially conscious community is definitely going to have a field day with this because on the outset, this looks like I am definitely not walking the talk. But I've been doing some research and I had a very long car ride from Colorado to LA. Actually not as bad as it looks. <laughs> By the way, here is a little montage of some photos of me wearing these clothes during the trip. I don't have a whole lot of photos just because I, you know, I tend to be like, this nature is beautiful, not like, oh, look at my outfit while I'm camping. <laughs> but I do have some. social consciousness of my wardrobe actually depends on how socially conscious it was created, the wardrobe itself. In a Medium article that I wrote, and which is linked below, I outlined the three tenets of socially conscious shop. And one of them is buying less stuff by buying only what you need. <laughs> and buying only what you need doesn't necessarily mean the things that give you basic survival. In the article, we looked at Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And for instance, it would justify a purchase of yoga pants because those fulfill your need for spiritual and exercise and to look good. Those are all important needs that ultimately need to be met. 
When looking at buying, there actually is an expanded pyramid from that that says if you need something to fulfill a specific need, you don't necessarily need to go straight to buying, which is at this top of the pyramid. You can actually go through an entire pyramid of a lot of different things before you get to buying and specifically buying new. And even though you would buy socially conscious new, there's a lot that you can do that's socially conscious before that level. That is what we call the hierarchy of needs. So now that we have established the hierarchy of needs, here are the criteria we're going to use to grade my pen. First, 30 possible points. Who made it? Is it made in a sweatshop or is it made locally? Are they are the workers paid a fair living wage for where they are in the world? Are they specifically being chosen because their country lacks labor laws? This is super important. I, I think even labels like H&M that are trying to be conscious can't get away from the fact that labor is one of the most costly parts of apparel. So when you're buying clothes and they seem way less expensive than what's generally on the market, it's probably because of the labor. Second, out of 30 points, what is it made out of? Is it ethically, sustainably harvested? Is it recycled material? Those are gonna get the top score. Um, it, on the other hand, if it is just mass produced cheap synthetics, that's, that's spot it. Um, I think it's not common knowledge yet, but the fashion industry is actually one of the top five industries in the world, at the top or near the top for waste. This is because of the dyes leaking into the environment um, in countries especially where there's very little environmental control. It's also because of the cuts, so there's a lot of wasted fabric. Then there is micro-pilling of the cheap fabric and the tiny pieces that come off in the wash and they don't get filtered out and they end up in the ocean. Which is where we are right now. And um, which is, you know, very important to preserve because of life on the planet. <laughs> That's 60 points is, is where is it, who makes it, and then how recently did I buy it? If it's within six months, um, you know, we go through the whole hierarchy. If it's older, then it's going to get higher points than it otherwise would have because it's something that I clearly regularly use. If it's gifted, for instance, it's gonna be regular. So once it's on that scale, it's like, how did I obtain it out of 30 points? We, we <laughs> give it a score. Uh, you know, the worst is just bought new. The, you know, for the trip, which there are some things, and the best would be, you know, given or swapped or you know, used what I already have, you know, purchased more than six months ago. So then there is the bonus, because that only adds up to 90. So you can give them a minus you are doing all that, that's great. The 10 points is if you go above the beyond. You're donating to a cause, you give back to a fund, whatever. You can be, you know, giving back to a cause and have recycled materials and still doing shitty on the labor and you're never gonna get to an A. And that's why the grading is separated. Um, and I can already say H&M is probably in that last category because they're doing so much as a company 
to do recycling um, and you know make things out of recycled fabrics or out of recycled material like rubber or whatever, bike tires. But they're still very ethically questionable on labor laws, which is what allows their clothing to be so inexpensive. So they're not going to get an A, no matter what. So I should say before we get into it that I have not graded this beforehand, before I created the rubric. So you're going to find out as I find out <laughs> what, what has happened. Um, and then I'll discuss how can I improve in the future. All right, so let's dissect what I have packed. Okay, so let's take inventory of everything that I packed. First, pile. This pile is gifts, mostly from, it looks like, Walmart, Old Navy, Ross. <laughs> Chinese companies and I'll get into that in a little bit. TJ Maxx or Ross. There are two pairs of shorts. They are both very comfortable. This is a cute shirt and shorts from Abercrombie. bikini and some running pants from Target, or as I call it, Target. Here, a pair of jammy shorts from Rite Aid. A slew of things. Um, including a t-shirt, a tank top, another tank top, and some shoes from H&M. Some Javianas from the company store in Huntington Beach. And don't let the beach tar fool you. These are actually only two months old. A shirt from a boutique. And a Nike shirt from a Ducoast. I don't know where. Some year. 2015. So, thank you for joining me on this illuminating exercise about the way I pack. It turns out I am definitely far below where I want to be as far as my summer packing wardrobe. The funny thing is that I was trained from a very young age when packing, to not pack anything you wouldn't want to lose or leave behind. You know, nothing too, too valuable unless it's like one or two things. I kind of took that to heart with me, I think, and I've only bought or packed things that are super cheap and replaceable. But I think now that I'm 
older and I take better care of my things, it's important to take that responsibility and change that mindset um, away from, you know, cheap and poor quality and back to sustainable, ethical, and, you know, buying things that last. Um, so that was a big eye-opener for me. And it has actually caused me to set as one of my goals by the end of 2021. I want to have not just my packing wardrobe, my entire wardrobe be at a B grade. So on average, everything I own should be a B. Maybe there are some things that are below, but if I, you know, like the Nike shirts, but if I've had them for a long time and continue to wear them, that does make them more sustainable and more ethical. But, um, you know, buying the new Rite Aid shorts, buying the cheap Chinese clothing, most of which has already been redonated because it's kind of a scam. Um, you know, things like that are just not acceptable. Um, that's not where I want to go with the wardrobe and, you know, that's not where the evolution of consciousness is as far as consumerism. This is my journey to become more woke and I want to now to do better. So, <laughs> I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me and have a wonderful day.